Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be playing part three of Doki Doki Lucha Club. We left off last episode against the girls were fighting, honey. The girls were fighting. <laughs> okay, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave it up there for you to watch. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe for my social media links down below. Without further ado, let's go into the video. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little bit more comfortable over here in the past couple of days. Entering the clubhouse, the usual scene greets me. Hi, CC. <laughs> yes, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to go buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? Th that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Purse? What happened? What's in the purse? <laughs> Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just want to take a look at it. <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets it continue spilling to the desk. The only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. Hey, yo. <laughs> Ooh. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you'd have to buy a snack before coming into the classroom. So either you're not hungry and you wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Oh? But there's one more thing. You're always hungry, and so that only leaves one option. Oh, uh, what you saying? What you trying to say? I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Oh, well, damn. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I, I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book as always. Uh, I wasn't listening or anything. He was. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell CJ to let me borrow some money. <laughs> me? Why me? That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Exactly. Besides, to only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is far enough retributed. Far enough retribution. What'd I say? <laughs> I mean, she got quiet. Look at her. Uh, did I just... I, I didn't mean that. You sure? That sounded personal. I got too absorbed in my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yori. It doesn't happen much, but it's fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You are right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That. <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess it's a little devil inside of us all, isn't it? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, but you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Nasuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Eh? Oh! Did you just get slapped? <laughs> what was that? This game getting violent. What the hell? Nah! I don't know what kind of sound it makes. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks so you're in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was that? Eh? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it was a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siri glances around. It, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just trying to give it to you. But then I heard your blab about the cupcakes. Oh, Nasuki was hurting. Nasuki was overhearing it too. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> N Nasuki, that's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. 
Jeez, just eat it. Siri rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Whoa. So good. What did I just do? <laughs> I ain't making all this noise. Sus. Siri suddenly claps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue. That what you get. <laughs> you went through a lot over just one cookie. Exactly. Calm down, girl. Yasuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours look Ah, yours look really good too, Nasuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Yeah? Why am I making this weird noise? Siori gets out of her seat and goes behind Nasuki, then wraps her arms around her. Okay. Uh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Nasuki reaches up and nudges Nasuki off of her. Sayori off of her. I said Nasuki. <laughs> Oof. Sayori suddenly leans back and takes a bite of Nasuki's cookie. We're well, just going. <laughs> hey! Did you see they just do that? This girl just eating all her cookies. Oh my god. Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. <laughs> Nasuki and I laugh as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yuri and I laugh as well. <laughs> Keep getting their names mixed up. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Hmm? And Suki glances around. Monica isn't in the classroom, in the club room. Ugh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being this late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Oh. Eh, that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly the door swings open. Oh, damn. <laughs> sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah, not really. <laughs> eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. Oh, you're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, n never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I'm kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> Everybody's acting weird. What's going on? Am I missing something? That makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I mustn't have heard it since I'm practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. <laughs> I don't, really. This girl a lion? <laughs> I, I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... See? Uh, like I said, she's lying. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Yay! That's so. That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Cece. Where to go? Monica smiles sweetly. Um, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out of Sayori's mysterious escapade. I'm sure Nasuki would end up complaining over her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Nasuki disappeared into the closet. What you doing in the closet? Cece! Cece! Siori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna go get some supplies from the other classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Well, you know how the festival's going on. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Where is Nasuki in the closet for? <laughs> 
Are you going with Cece to get supplies? There's no need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Aw, uh, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It's just a suggestion. See if you can find some poster papers too, okay? Okay. Ready, Cece? Yep, let's go. Sierra and I exit the classroom. Clubhouse. What I say? I follow behind Sayori, hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, it feels like I'm taking a kid to a, to the mall or something. Sayori finds pleasure in the simplest things sometimes. Hey, Sayori, what exactly are we doing for the festival anyway? I'm not supposed to be going off. Oh, I said. Hold on. My phone went off when I said that. I'm not sure how you make an event out of literature. <laughs> Me and Monica have it all planned out. Don't you worry. Is that so? Yep. We're going to do a poetry performance. A performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's going to take a turn on stage and recite their favorite poem. Ah, that sounds, that sounds boring. <laughs> sounds kind of dull. <laughs> Cece, you're not thinking about it in the way right, you're not thinking about it in the right way at all. Well, how do you want me to think? It's not just about reading poems. It's about performing them. You see the lines of a poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flowers beckons to me. Beacons to me? Beckons to me? I don't know. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots, caressing the final joyous moments between my fingers. But what ends have I summoned this joy? But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, what? The once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Uh, like that. Sayori, how do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh? You meanie. I'm working super hard on this, you know. Ah, I know, I know. I, I just meant that it's pretty an ordinary contrast to your cute self. <laughs> Don't say it, it's embarrassing. But I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I'm so excited. The festival's gonna be so much fun. Sierra spins herself around in the hallway again. Hey, Cece, this classroom's over here. It's so empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission? Eh? It's been a long time since I've spent time with Sierra like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happiness vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I began to hold myself up in the room more and more. So going adventuring with Sayori brings out a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. Mmm, that's deep. The two of us enter the classroom. Sayori heads straight to the closet and I follow. Let's see what we can find in here. Crayon! There he pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand, too. They're kind of dirty, though. Sierra starts pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the crayon's name. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted. We'll still need to find... Wait! I'm looking for my favorite color. Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Ah, oh, I dropped one by accident. Oh! Who over here slapping people? What's going on? Sierra bends over and smacks her forehead right on the shelf. She falls to the floor and crayons spill all over her lap. Oh, so that's what I thought she got slapped. Ugh. Why well, I keep thinking that? You okay? My forehead. Sierra clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. Since Sayori is sitting on the floor, I grab her by the waist and pull her up to the closet. Pull her out the closet. Hold on, wait a minute now. You have to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts. Just do it for a second. Hey, yo! What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Sayori slowly reaches her hand from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. Damn. A bump is starting to form as well. I mean, it's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. CC. Where would I find some ice around this time? Uh, I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Oh, even wincing from pain, Sierra makes a silly joke. <laughs> what are you saying? 
be right, I'll be right back, okay? O okay. Let's have to get this girl some ice. I pass the on her shoulder and walk out the hallway. I look at the nearest vending machine. Why did the music stop? What's going on? What should I get? It doesn't really matter since it will be used as an ice pack rather than a drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice, so I purchased that one. In just a moment, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. Why, why did the music stop? Okay. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsy scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the wrong spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori a bottle of apple juice. Aw. It's nice and cold. Sayori opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sayori, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Uh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sayori places the bottom against the bump on her, on her head. It stings. Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Cece. This kind of reminds me of growing up, doesn't it? Eh, what do you mean? You know how we used to play outside all the time. I'd always try to keep up with you. Are they about to kiss or something? You're kind of oblivious in some ways. Like I usually fall behind or had trouble climbing up on things like you did. But sometimes when I tried to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself or get a bump. And I would start crying really hard. <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you would. As you could, I mean. <laughs> you would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Hell yeah, if, somebody, if little girl was crying near a boy, of course somebody gonna think that. <laughs> Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know. Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. I guess I was always focused on my on my game. I guess I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay enough attention to you. So in a way, it is my fault. Kind of like this time, too. If I wasn't rushing you out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Cece. I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me, even when I'm, even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. Don't, don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels normal. Before I know it, I'm treating you like that. I guess that's what happens when you're being friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. CC, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think you'll be like this forever? I doubt it. Oh, forever, okay. If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll each end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sayori has a whimsical expression in her eyes. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that when I see her in deep thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess, I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry Monica, you know. Good luck with that. She's gonna see your forehead either way. Not if I hide it under my bangs. Oh, she got up real fast. <laughs> Sayori hops on her feet. Ah, <laughs> she closes her forehead again. Don't stand up so fast after hurting yourself. Exactly. Uh, well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out the classroom. Sayori plays with her bangs to try and hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the clubhouse. To the club room. <laughs> I can't see a clubhouse. <laughs> ah, you're back. Time I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. And so you're right, your forehead. She's fine, don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons to smack my forehead in the shelf. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well she did actually. Well, anyway. Were you able to find everything you needed? Uh-huh. I have it right here. And Sorry frantically glances around herself. I, I forgot all the stuff. Girl! 
Calm down, Sam. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. Aha! Uh -huh. Sound like you ended up doing all the work, Cece. Ah, uh, well, Sayori. I forgot to come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made an adventure. Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In that case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me, too. Okay, everyone. Are you ready to show your poems? No. Guess I should grab mine. Oh. <laughs> After making sure the crayon box is closed tightly, I return to my deceit. Who should I show my first poem to? Yuri, Nasuki, Yuri, and Monica. Hmm. Let's do it, Monica, this time. Let's to start with her. Hi again, Cece. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that, as long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're employing yourself. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with the masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. It's pretty good. It makes me think of Sayori, like the other one that you wrote. I was waiting at Aunt to read it. Good. Oh, wait, no, wait. You two are like a dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I I'm not shy, I'm just... just <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know it takes a bit of time to make friends with everyone, but Yuri and Asuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them your share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, approachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's not like, it's nothing like that. I'm just still getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm putting pressure on you or something. I really don't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyways, you want to read my poem now? Ugh. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Oh lord, save me. Save me? The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, and in an endless... What'd that say? An endless... Phony? What? A meaningless noise. I don't know what she said. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Eeking, screeching. Wait, squeaking. Wait, squeaking, screeching, piercing. I, I don't know what those words are. Like playing a chalkboard on a, on a turntable. Like playing a vial on a piece of crust. Like playing a vial on a piece of crust. An endless poem of nothingness. Of meaning. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Load me. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm scared. <laughs> hmm. I'm kind of scared. It's even more. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I wrote it. I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. Just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines, really short, makes you feel like they're trying to speak over the over the noise. Over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of, of a feeling. Or a conversation with, a, with the reader. Or a conversation with the reader. Putting, in that, so putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Sometimes you'll find something facing a difficult... Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. When it happens, don't forget to save your game. What you talk? What you talking about? Should I save? I, I'm gonna save right here. Okay, I saved it. I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. 
You never know where you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> what do you mean by that? But I'm going to end this episode right here. I know it's kind of like a little bit short. I'm just trying to get this video out so I can get some more videos on my gaming channel. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow my social media link down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.